Hello everybody, it's Emery48 here and welcome back to another Star Wars video. Today we are going into Labyrinth of Evil by James Lachino, which is on the Legends timeline, and I got it for five bucks as an ebook. It takes place in 19 BBY like we've been for a long time, which is the same year as Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Chapter 1 Obi-Wan Anakin and Commander Cody are on Catonimoidia, attempting to capture Viceroy Newt Gunray to bring him to justice. Chapter 2 the trio, along with Clone Squad 7, have faced complications against local harvester beetles, which are massive, and droids on staps. As they bunkered down, droidicas came to reinforce. Chapter 3. The group has made it into the lowest level of the Citadel. Obi-Wan and Anakin are splitting up, Anakin with four commandos, Obi-Wan with Cody, three injured clones, and the rest of Squad 7. Chapter 4. Anakin's group has found Newt Gunray and started fighting his super battle droid guards. Chapter 5. In another part of the complex, Obi-Wan's group fights more droids. A shipping container broke and it let out a toxin into the air. Chapter 6. By the time Anakin's group had made it through the droids, Gunray had escaped to the Separatist fleet. Anakin was very mad that they let Gunray slip away. They then got a call for help from Obi-Wan's group. Chapter 7. Delirious from the spores in the air, Obi-Wan had managed to take out most of the droids as Anakin and his group arrived. The combined forces take out the remaining droids in the area. Chapter 8. Gunray is aboard a Separatist ship, but they had left his walking chair in their rush to escape, which had been gifted to him by Sidious and gave him access to Sidious, Dooku, and Grievous through hollow calls. Chapter 9. The chair started self-destruct mode, but not before Obi-Wan and Anakin saw a recording of Newt Gunray speaking with a hooded figure he called Lord Sidious. Chapter 10. Sate Pestage is stalling Senators Bail Organa, Padme Amidala, Mon Mothma, Tur Tanil, Bana Bremu, Fang Zar, and Shi Ekwe from having their scheduled meeting with Supreme Chancellor Palpatine. Chapter 11. Yoda joined Obi-Wan and Anakin and watched the hologram from the chair. He spoke with Obi-Wan about Dooku, Sidious, sifo and the complex start to the war. Chapter 12. Palpatine called Anakin after the battle. He told Anakin it was all right to feel anger. Chapter 13. Palpatine met with the group of senators, and not all too much was accomplished, as Palpatine was reluctant to take away any of the security restrictions. Chapter 14. Anakin asked Obi-Wan questions that compared the Jedi to the Sith. Chapter 15. Gunray has made it to Grievous's fleet, where all the Separatist leaders met so Grievous could better protect them. Chapter 16. Obi-Wan and Anakin traveled to Charos IV, the planet the chair had been built on, looking for the Builder. The leader allowed them to talk to the Builder, who ran when questioned about the chair. The leader calmed everything down, having the Builder give them answers. The transceiver in the chair was from Escarte an asteroid mining facility owned by the Commerce Guild. Chapter 17. The Jedi see Grievous' message to Gunray's chair, saying that Belderone will be the planet they stay on. Chapter 18. As soon as Grievous' fleet came out of hyperspace, arriving at Belderone, they were attacked by a Republic fleet. Chapter 19. Obi-Wan and Anakin led the fleet in a successful defense of Belderone. As Grievous was fleeing to hyperspace, he fired on the evacuation shuttles, transporting people from the planet to a moon. Chapter 20. Mace Windu and Yoda discuss the battle at Belderone and plan to update Palpatine. Chapter 21. Grievous visits Gunray, saying how angry he was that he had lost the chair and let the Republic see the transmission. Chapter 22. The Sith had been responsible for Grievous's injuries to force him to want to join them once they offered to cyborg him. Chapter 23. Mace Windu and Yoda met with Palpatine, updating him on Belderone and their new proof of Sidious. Palpatine has ordered the Jedi to hunt down Sidious. Chapter 24. With the help of a Republic agent, Trevale, Obi-Wan and Anakin broke Kassar out of his cell. Kassar is the next link for more information about Gunray's chair. Chapter 25. The four were able to escape. Kassar gave Anakin information on the transceiver. He made one for the Separatists and one for Sinar, which is a weapons manufacturer for the Republic. 
He also knows the pilot that made the delivery. Chapter 26. Dooku visited Sidious on Coruscant. Sidious wants Dooku to set a trap for Obi-Wan and Anakin and kill Obi-Wan, forcing Anakin's shift to the dark side. Chapter 27. Bail meets with the Jedi Council to discuss Palpatine's State of the Republic address. Chapter 28. Obi-Wan and Anakin arrived on Now 3 in search of the pilot Fa'el Lei. Obi-Wan and Anakin were able to find Fa'el. She thought they were there to kill her when a group of bounty hunters arrived. They killed or incapacitated them and began their escape to their shuttle as more bounty hunters arrived. She had delivered the ship to someone with a lightsaber, but definitely not a Jedi. Chapter 29. Obi-Wan and Anakin successfully escaped the bounty hunters and Fa'el told them she delivered the ship to the works on Coruscant, which is where Sidious had trained Maul before the war and Dooku after he fell to the dark side. Chapter 30. Mace Windu led a search of the building in the works Fa'el had delivered the ship to. They confirmed that Dooku had met with someone else two weeks prior. They traced the unknown being's footsteps to a tunnel system that led all the way to the Senate District, with many offshoots along the way. Chapter 31. Yoda met with Palpatine to discuss their progress in the hunt for Sidious. Chapter 32. Sidious called Dooku and Grievous. Dooku is to set a trap for Obi-Wan and Anakin on Tithe. Grievous is going to send the Separatist leaders to Utapau and prepare for the attack on Coruscant. Chapter 33. Dooku has launched his attack on Tithe. Obi-Wan and Anakin are being sent to recapture the planet. Chapter 34. Mace Windu led an investigation of the tunnel system, finding a group of undocumented refugees and later a tunnel to a speeder bike. Chapter 35, Anakin spoke with Palpatine over a hollow call and was reassured his place was with Obi-Wan taking back tight. Chapter 36, Mace Windu followed this offshoot tunnel which goes to the sub-basement level below 500 Republica, one of the most common addresses for senators and celebrities, including Chancellor Palpatine. Chapter 37, Obi-Wan and Anakin flew through the space battle above Tithe so they could head to Dooku's location on planet. Chapter 38. As Mace Windu made it to the sub-basement, the building began to shake. He and Shock T went outside to investigate. Many speeders were crashing, communicators are disabled, and they think Coruscant may be under attack. Chapter 39. Obi-Wan and Anakin spoke to a hologram of Dooku, then began fighting droids. Yoda wants to recall the Jedi to Coruscant to defend against Grievous' attack. Chapter 40. The investigation of the tunnel continued without Mace Windu. They found a shaft, took it down, and came upon a door, which after scanning found there was a life form and droids on the other side. Chapter 41. Obi-Wan and Anakin are still busy fighting droids on Tithe. Chapter 42. The Senate is evacuated. Chapter 43. The group searching the tunnel was attacked by Geonosians. One saw Sidious and was impressed that he had been able to evade the Jedi for so long and knew he was about to die with the knowledge. All clones and intelligence officers were killed and left in the tunnel. Chapter 44. Shock T and Stas Ali have found Palpatine in his apartment and are bringing him to safety. Chapter 45. In rage, Anakin had caused the weak structure to collapse. Dooku took this time to leave Tithe while the Jedi are trapped. Chapter 46, Padme, Bail Organa, and Mon Mothma fought some vulture droids after their vehicle had been shot down. Chapter 47, Mace Windu and Kit Fisto fought droids and Grievous, keeping them away from Palpatine on a train headed for a bunker. The tracks were shot, and the train slowly started to fall. Chapter 48, Anakin sensed Padme was in danger. He and Obi-Wan broke free of the rubble in time to see Dooku and the Separatists leave Tithe. Chapter 49. Mace Windu and Kit Fisto went after the gunship they suspect Grievous escaped in. Shakti and Stas Ali are bringing Palpatine from the crashed train to the bunker. As they arrive to the bunker, they are attacked again. Chapter 50. Mace and Fisto shot down the gunship, but Grievous was not aboard it. Grievous and his Magna Guards attacked the bunker, killing clones, Jedi Knights, and Palpatine's guards, capturing the Chancellor. Droids were outside, keeping Shock T and Stas Ali busy. Chapter 51. By the time Mace Windu and Kit Fisto reached the bunker, Shock T and Stas Ali were already inside, Palpatine gone, and dozens 
dead. Chapter 52. Obi-Wan and Anakin have received word of the Separatist attack on Coruscant. Chapter 53. Many Jedi are pursuing Grievous' shuttle, but failing. Chapter 54. Grievous presented Palpatine to the news once aboard his flagship. When the Separatist leaders saw that, there was celebration on Utapau. Chapter 55. Dooku arrived at Nelvan briefly to divert any following Republic ships, then made the jump to Coruscant. Chapter 56. Obi-Wan and Anakin jumped to hyperspace, headed for Coruscant. The next action would be the start of Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. The book was... it was alright. It was fine. It was a bit underwhelming in the title, Labyrinth of Evil. Uh, we didn't really get that labyrinth. There was no real emotion, no thrill, not a lot of excitement in this book. I do always appreciate seeing where Obi-Wan and Anakin are throughout the Clone Wars, throughout their journey of this book, just because of how it leads right into episode three. All the characters mentioned, you pretty much know what's happening. Um, there's no surprises. How they get from point A to point B, I guess, is a little... Ooh, a little surprising, but overall, uh, this one was an underwhelming one for me, especially since the books that I have read by James which you know in the past have all been great. Um, this one I think is a little bit below that bar, but still a good book. Uh, it just felt like a really long short story because the book was pretty short in general for a novel consideration. That's what I have for Labyrinth of Evil. Thank you everybody so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.